Today we're talking sustainable footwear in 2022. Lots of manufacturers are making attempts to produce more sustainable and environmentally friendly options these days. Nike, Adidas, Allbirds, Puma, everybody's on it right now. But is it all a bit of a trick? Are some of these environmentally friendly and more sustainable products more marketing material than recycled material? Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Ed Midsole Bud here. I do appreciate you tuning in, help the channel to grow by hitting that subscribe button, but also clicking the bell below for notifications when we roll out those new videos for you. It also helps us out a huge amount too if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. Hit us with a super thanks below to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. In today's video, I want to discuss some more environmentally friendly and sustainable footwear options and explore whether they're more marketing material than recycled material. Obviously, we've seen Nike utilising Zumex scraps in its latest Zoomfly 5. These are obviously off-cuts from their high-performance shoes. And we've had Puma and Adidas utilising yarn that's made from plastic bottles that have been collected and reused. Is this all ecologically driven, though? We know that Nike and Adidas and all the other manufacturers collect masses of data about our running, sales and purchases as well, alongside information on how when and perhaps why we buy some of the products that they manufacture. It's very rare for people to be using high-end items like the Vaporfly or Alphafly shoes on a regular daily basis. I think mainly due to the cost. Some of these are ridiculously expensive. I know recently some of the Vaporfly shoes have been reduced down to a more appropriate level i suppose so it does make sense for these manufacturers to try and produce something with the dna of those shoes but perhaps with a more expanded use case and a more affordable price let's not forget that we live in very hard economic times right now interest rates are soaring and expendable income is certainly on the decrease though at times these sustainable options haven't always come with that more economical price. You can hardly classify the Alphafly Next Nature as a cheaper, affordable version of that model. I mean, we've got the same Zoom X scraps as they've used in the Zoomfly 5. you got an upper on there. There's a carbon plate as well, as proved by a recent video that a viewer pointed out to me. There's some rubber on the bottom and the price tag, well, £125 less than the Alpha Fly Next Nature. So getting on for almost double the price, is it really worth that? It appears that not all it appears that not all sustainable shoes are made the same. Now, one of the big advantages that we get with these super shoes is they tend to be very, very light on foot, the weight's reduced, so when we get a heavier version of them, is there really a big advantage? Is it worth paying all that extra money? I think that's marketing perhaps at its best using that sustainable or environmentally friendly ethos to try and sell more products. I do remember a viewer a couple of years back saying to me that Zoom X is really hard to manufacture and that's why it's so highly priced. And now we've got a very highly priced shoe which is just off cuts of that Zoom X. So I don't really think that that argument rings true. I'm finding the crushed Zoom X stuff in the Zoom Fly 5 perfectly serviceable. I wouldn't say it's in any way the same as something you'd find in the Invincible run. It's just way more squish here in that shoe. But I'd suggest utilising some of this stuff in a more lifestyle orientated fashion. I don't think there's any problem there. I think it's going to utilise some stuff that would otherwise just get thrown away. But when it comes to performance, even for amateur runners, does it make a real difference? Very interesting that Adidas have got a very different approach to all of this. They very much kept their sustainable and environmentally friendly models separate from some of their other top line running performance models. It's a very different approach with their shoes in terms of sustainability and performance. That also seems to be reflected in terms of the asking price for some of the Adi Zero models against some of the comparable Nike models. Let's not forget recycled yarns have been a feature of football shirts back years ago. Nike, Adidas and Puma were quick to highlight the recycled nature of those products, but there was never really a considerable price difference between those and the earlier shirts. I think it's a little different though when it comes to footwear. 
when we consider that running is all about that foam ground contact. Let's not forget our feet make contact with the ground thousands of times over the course of like a 10K run, for example. So I think that's where high-end performance footwear differs a little bit from our typical lifestyle models. There's that key interaction, isn't there, between the foot and the running surface. So I think it's just that little bit more important here. So our company simply now using sustainable or environmentally friendly features as a means to market new products to us as consumers, which aren't actually all that different from the ones that they've already got. Surely a race flat running shoe with the most minimal materials, a slice of foam underfoot, and a very thin upper mesh material. Let's not forgetting that rubber outsole is far better to the world than a mass of foam, various different rubber sections that need to be stuck on, and an upper consisting of multiple overlays and excessive padding. Only now have Nike started supplying running shoes just in standard cardboard boxes like this. The old labels on here, these can be easily returned to Nike and they're very keen to let you know that the shoe's made of 20% recycled materials by weight. Quite amazing it's taken this long for them to do that. Of course, nobody buying a Vaporfly or Alphafly is gonna expect their shoe to turn up in one of those brown boxes, are they? I have noticed recently a drop in the rubber quality that's featured on some running shoe models. Maybe they're switching up some of the compounds, but they do seem to be wearing out that little bit faster. I remember the rubber on the Vaporfly 4% model seemed impervious to wear, but the Vaporfly next percent outsole and certainly the Pegasus 39 this year certainly weren't that. It's almost like a foam rubber that's featured on the next percent and certainly the last couple of pairs I've had were easily penetrated by sharp debris. Yeah, the Pegasus 39 and the Invincible Runner got fantastic traction, but I am finding reduced longevity in terms of that outsole rubber. So do some of the benefits here offset each other in the end? I know that the rubber utilized on the Pegasus 39 is some sort of recycled stuff, it does seem to be wearing down faster. It's kind of a six of one, half a dozen of the other type situation. I mean, any running shoe is going to wear out over time, isn't it? And that's what it's there to protect our feet at the end of the day. And of course, those manufacturers want that to happen so you can come back and spend your hard-earned cash with them on the new model. They don't want a running shoe to last too long. That would be crazy. It's kind of like building a car that just never breaks. You're going to put yourself out of business, aren't you? Just makes for a bigger gap between each purchase. I do believe the midsole is the key important factor here though. That wears out first beyond any other element of the shoe. And because of that, I'm not sure that recycled foam is the way forward when it comes to running shoes. Recycle all the other parts, I think that's a good idea, but that's why we've seen very few successful so far implementations of reused foam in these shoes. Below standard foams these days, just don't cut it when it comes to running performance. What do you make of my musings today, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. Today from Elf Power with their new album, Artificial Countrysides. I'm really liking the sound of this band. Really sounds like early granddaddy stuff, if you've ever heard of that group. Certainly a very free and loose sort of atmosphere. Quite dry drums, lots of interesting guitar work going on. Undigested Parts and Artificial Countrysides are two tracks to check out. Really interesting use of drum machines and programmed rhythms here, alongside of standard acoustic drums. I think this one only released very recently. Go and check it out, you might enjoy it if you like your music slightly alternative and odd elf power with artificial countrysides thanks for tuning in people it is always appreciated hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies hit us with a super thanks to help support the channel my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you